Reading Ladies and Gentlemen, the Nisai Talk Show, The Secret of Top Students, will begin shortly. Before it starts, I would like to invite everyone to settle and watch a short video together. Nisai Global School is the first fully interactive online British secondary school that delivers quality assured home education for pupils aged 11 to 19 in the Asia region. Nisai Global School offers a complete secondary education online. We provide everything that you would expect to find in a traditional school, from subject lessons, homework, and assignments, to houses, clubs, and even end-of-term reports. Being recognized as a Cambridge International School, the curriculum of Nisai Global School is adapted from the Nisai Virtual Academy, the Cambridge International Curriculum and leading to Cambridge IGCSE, A-level qualifications. Welcome to the Nisai Talk Show. The Secret of Top Students. My name is Alan. I'm in AS level at Nisai Global School, and I will be the host for this event. Ladies and gentlemen, Nisai Global School with high quality education from the UK aims to support students with the pursuit of knowledge through our life. Be, we believe that learning is not confined to the classroom environment and school subjects. Instead, people can learn throughout their adulthood, even in old age and in variety of situations, particularly to, in their daily interactions with others and with the world around them. It is important that students are able to learn from everything and everyone. Therefore, the Nisai Talk Show, The Secret of Top Student, is host as an event where international Nisire can gather together, discuss and review what they have learned in class. Students will also share their study tips and achievements throughout their learning experience. Joining the event today, I would like everyone to watch a short video about our guest speakers. Hello everyone, my name is Clayton and I am an Indonesian Nisai student. Currently, I'm at the NS3 level and for some subjects, I'm at the first year of IGCSE. Hi everyone, I'm Esther and I'm from Malaysia. I'm currently studying English at NS1. Hello, my name is Konami Onosato. I am currently studying A-level at Nisai. Hello everyone, my name is Kim Lin Dan, and I'm from Vietnam. I currently study at in year 2 Nisai. I'm Shana Surya, an Indian student studying at Nisai in the level of IGCC. Hi there, my name is Shogun. I'm from Thailand and currently in NS3. I enjoy learning and studying because it allows me to understand more about the world around me, how it works, and the people in it. It also allows me to learn more about myself, and that satiates my curiosity. That's also partially why I aspire to become a scientist. In my learning journey, stories inspired me a lot. When I was a little girl, my mom used to read me a lot of stories, and this built up my reading habit. I love reading very much, especially English books. I want to become a pianist and probably a part-time author. I have always wanted to study in the UK and my dream is to work in the field of arts someday. My inspiration in learning comes from many works of arts and movies. They always make me want to learn more and broaden my perspective to the world. So you know, 
Studying is tough and even harder when you have to study from 9 to 10 subjects per week. I know it's very exhausting. Well, but for me, I don't find it boring at all because I find studying as a very interesting habit to do so. When I think about all my good grades, good achievements, as well as making my parents proud of me because of them, all the motivations would keep me up forward into learning. Well, I don't really have a dream for now, but my current ambition is to keep looking forward into the positivity in the future. I have written two books, and the most recent one is Demystifying God for Young Soul. I really enjoy reading poetry and non-fiction books. My grandmother, as well as my teachers at Nisa, inspire me to learn. I enjoy learning new things. As we all know, it opens up to new opportunities. It also helped me in my personal growth. When I learn about science and math, my brain gets smarter. And to learn is to gain knowledge. My ambition is to work as a cardiologist in the medical field. I really don't have an idea about what I wanted to do when I was younger. But quickly, I realized that I wanted to become a doctor as Nisai teachers and my parents motivate me. My inspiration in learning is to get a good education and get a stable job. My dream is to become a software engineer and find a way to create something to make the world a more sustainable place. Joining in the event today, and these are our lovely guests today. Please get ready to listen to the learning journey and join various interactive activities with our amazing Nisires. The agenda for the event today include three parts. Part one, the various learning strategies and multiple academic achievement of Nisires. Part two, time management is key for extracurricular activities and hobbies. Part three is Q&A, question and answer. Now, let's talk, start our talk show today. Firstly, our, to our youngest and newest student here, Esther from Malaysia, how did you get on with Nisai classes? Hi everyone, I'm Esther from Malaysia. I joined Nisai at NS1 for English in September. And I like the lessons plan in a way that bring us step by step in learning. From vocabularies to sentences, then paragraphs, and now we're exploring a book. I'm so excited to have discussions and reviews about the storyline and characters of the book. One assignment is given each week, which to me is not bothering at all. The lesson duration is just 30 minutes and four lessons per week, which is just nice. I don't get bored during the lesson and it has become a routine for me in English learning. Besides, the teacher and Nisai are very friendly and encouraging. For example, Ms. Zira, a soft-spoken teacher, always encourages us to try and answer and give compliments to us for taking the initiative to try. And that's all from me. Well, thank you for your sharing. I know you are just a newbie in Nisai this year, but all your sharing are really meaningful for us and for everyone else who joined this talk show today. Next, for Shana, a friend from India, also a newbie at Nisai this year, like Esther. So Shana, how do you feel about Nisai teachers and the subject you are studying here? Okay, so hello everyone and hello Nisaiers. I'm Shana Surya from India here. At Nisai, I study IGCC English, Environmental Management and Coordinated Science. I am an author of two books and my recent one is Demystifying God for Young Soul. I really love reading and writing. 
So I learned a lot about the subject, all thanks to Nisai's teaching strategies. Nisai prepared me for critical thinking, communication skills, and all other 21st century skills. I was someone who was so shy to speak to students in the class, but slowly to my surprise, Nisai helped me improve my communication skills as I attended some extracurricular activities at Nisai. Also at first, there are numerous uh, innovative teaching practices where students get an opportunity to learn practically. And my classes are a lot of fun for me. And I really love practicing and participating at quizzes. They are really interactive. Thank you for your sharing, Shana. Uh, I also, when I was a newbie in this side last year, now is my second year, I feel also surprised. And I feel that all the classes in this side are really interesting. So thank you again, Shana, for telling to remember, memorize me all of that meaningful memory. Next. Um, what about Shogun from Thailand? Do you share the same impression on the teacher and the subject? Um, yes, hello everyone. My name is Tanakit, but you can call me Shogun. I am Thai and currently in an S3. And with my impressions on the teachers, I can feel that the teachers is teaching everybody with the best of their abilities, making sure to either go faster or slower for those who are struggling or keeping up with the best of their abilities to make sure oh, uh, they make sure no one is left behind and give us subjects that will expand our knowledge while still keeping it entertaining. It may only be a 30 minute lesson, but the information that is acquired feels like an hour's worth. And that's all for me. Thank you for your sharing again, Shogun. Yeah, all the classics are really meaningful and our teacher always trying to help us to improve us and uh, with me, I don't forget anything knowledge after leave the class. So thank you again. Lin Zhan, come from Vietnam as me, is an IGCSE student at both the mainstream school and at Nisai. I reckon that sometimes studying workload will get heavy. So yet your academic performance is consistently satisfactory. So how did you manage it? Um, so hello, I'm Nindan. Well, you know, studying ICCSE courses is very tough when you have to study from 9 to 10 subjects a week. And also you have to do a ton of homework on each. Well, I always give out like three hours or so of more days to study and my usual link is from 8 to 11 p.m. Well, and for outside activities, I sometimes did some exercise or go having a little break for myself with my friends from the range of 3.30 to 5, the time that after school when I was free. And I also entered a lot of competitions without the thoughts of bringing back rewards because I just find it interesting in joining them. Well, in the fact that I joined a lot of competitions and in order to do that, I have to set out the time evenly in order to practice uh, evenly in all fields. Well, like uh, in the three hours of my studying routines, I will add in the time I need to practice for competitions. For example, two hours for homework and the other one hour left is for extra practice. Or on some days, which I have more homeworks than the day before, I will use all of that day to, uh, to finish all my homeworks and use the next day for extra practice. So it's just a pretty simple schedule. Well, that's our such really helpful sharing for everyone because I know even me and other students who started both like two school um, together and both are IGCSE so sometimes it's really tired so all your sharing are really meaningful and really helpful for them to know how to manage their time usefully. Thank you for your sharing again, Lingdan. Also being a student of multiple schools like me, Lingdan and other, Clayton from Indonesia, currently at INS3 and IGCSE at Nisai, excels not only in the subject at school, but also in competitions. How do you approach the work to help such great academic performance? Um, hello, everyone. My name is Clayton and I'm from Indonesia. So usually I would divide my work 
to four groups. And these are in order of the priority. The first one would be the most urgent and important. Then the second one would be the most urgent and not important. Then the third one would be not urgent and important. And then the last one would be not urgent and not important. So I would look at the deadlines of my homeworks task or any other events. Then I will like do a run through throughout the questions if they are homework, just to check how difficult they are. And this will relate to the importance. So there are seven days a week and I arrange that according to the deadlines given. So if homework's deadline is like on Friday or Thursday, I will start doing it on Tuesday or Wednesday. And if homeworks were due on weekends, I would do it on Thursday or Friday or Wednesday. And if the homeworks were due next week, I would do it on the weekend. So basically I do homeworks in proportionate to their deadlines. Thank you, That's so George. Good. Also, thoughtful sharing, Clayton. And now that we have discussed for a while, do you think it's time for some warm-ups? Everyone, please join us in the first mini game, the picture puzzle. Here come the game rule. Guest speakers need to guess one key phrase which contains two words with three letters. There are eight clues about the key phrase, which includes seven words and one picture. They have to answer seven questions to get the clues and take turn to choose a random question and have 20 seconds to answer each question. For each question answered correctly, guest speakers get five points and the according piece of the picture will be revealed. If they answer the question incorrectly, the according piece will not be shown. After seven questions, guest speaker will give them 30 seconds to finalize the guess for the key phrase. When the time's up, they need to show the answer. If they get the correct answer, the winner will get 10 points. Now, let's get started. So everyone, please remove background. Ah, oh, I see everyone have removed your background. That's great. So let's come to the first choice. Esther, please choose a number. A question, please. Seven. Okay, question seven. Nisai students. Question seven, fill in the blank with one word. Nisai student who come from many countries in the world bring blank in culturals, backgrounds, and perspective to the school. The word will have nine letters and you get 20 seconds. The time start now. The time is end. Everyone, can you please raise your answer on, please? Sorry, I cannot see from Linda and Clayton answer. Can you make it? Okay, I can see from Clayton. How about Esther, Linda, Shana? We are waiting for Esther and Shana. Do you have any answer? Can everyone turn off your blur blank? So can anyone raise your answer again, please? Okay, so we have some correct answer here. The correct answer here is diversity. And I can see Clayton, you have correct answer. So congratulations. So, 
So can you open the question, please? I think that Aileen have some technical issue, but now may I ask Linda to choose the next uh, question, please? Um, I choose number six, please. Number six, question number six is fill in the blind. Um, the question is access to a quality education can transform one's life and dot, 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 kid will have a better opportunities to succeed so please uh, start the timer Okay, time's up. Can I have all the answer from our speaker, please? Okay, educated, unlucky. I can't see from Easter. Um, edu educated, okay. How about Shana? Hold on, hold on. I can't see it clearly. Please wait. Ah, okay. So I think that all of you got the correct answer. Yeah, congratulations. So our answer is educated. So please, we open the hint and the picture. Uh, next one, I would like to invite Shogun. Your turn. Um, number one, please. Okay, number one. Uh, that is a word with 10 letters. It's use, uh, it's the use of a skill and imagination to produce something new or to produce art. Time start now. Okay, time's up. Can I have all the answer from the student, please? Okay, let me check. Abstract, literature. How about Shana? Innovation, creativity, and innovative. Okay, I can see that one student has the correct one. Congratulations to Esther. You got the correct answer. So the answer for this question is creativity. and. You will have a chance. Uh, we will have a chance to open the next um, picture. And the last turn, I think, is to Clayton. And I can see that our MC Ellen is back. So I will uh, move it to you. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, my family have a power cut, so I have kicked out, but I'm back. So Clayton, please choose your question. Um, number three, please. Okay, question number three, please. Fill in the blank with one word at Nisai. We believe that everyone around the blank has equal value and should have access to high quality education. The word have five letters. Time start now.
Okay, time's up, everyone. Please raise your answer. Okay, the answer is world. Everyone, you are correct. So please open question three picture, please. So anyone, can anyone guess what is the keyword here? If you can, please raise your hand. Okay, so I think, um, firstly, I want to ask a little bit. First, Esther, Esther, do you have answer for the keyword? Because I think the picture is show a lot. No, sorry. Okay, thank you. So how about Shogun, do you have any question? Uh, no, sorry. Okay, so how about Shana? I have no clue. How about Clayton? Do you have any answer? Oh, I, I've seen this before, but I forgot the word. Sorry. Okay, thank you. So how about Linda? Do you have any idea about this word? Um, I guess the world is global citizen. Global citizen. Wow, that is correct. Everyone give Lingdan a clap, please. The word is global citizen and Lingdan have won this game. Wow, such a great guess. Thank you, Lingdan. Why you don't answer sooner? Okay. As I was thinking. So uh, okay, great job, but your thing is really great. So why waiting for the result? Can I have a winner? Link down, have some share about this game. Do you think it's interesting or something else? Yep, I think this game is quite interesting when we have other people to join in and play together. And I want to listen some idea sharing about Clayton. Um, well, I think this game can be interesting, but the thing is, I don't have a lot. I don't have my vocabulary level isn't like a lot. So it might be quite challenging for me. Thank you for your sharing. Clayton, so I want to see another sharing about this game. A newbie, Esther, please. Through this game, I get to know more about Misai. And I think it's quite fun. Okay, thank you for just sharing, Esther. So, can Shana, what do you think about our keyword, global citizen? Yeah, this game was really interesting one. And global citizen is, uh, um, for example, if I'm from India, if I have a citizenship in US, I guess that is global citizenship. Thank you for your sharing. So how about Clayton? What do you think our global citizen have idea with you? Um, well, I don't know the exact meaning, but I'm thinking like, you know, the citizenship card that everyone has that proves they're a citizen of that country or nation. So technically global citizen would mean that you can live anywhere and be recognized as a citizen of any nation. Well, thank you for sharing also, Clayton. And everyone, if you have a really want to become a global citizen, so please have join and have a great study year. Nisai 1, 2, 3, IGCSE, AS, and A level with us in Nisai Global School. So let's continue our talk show. Oh, I have the result here. After the first minute game picture, the score of our guest speakers are follow us. 
So firstly is Kim Lee. Ling Dan, you have 15 points. Shana, you have 15 points. And Shogun, you also have 15 points. Esther and Clayton, both of you have equal points, which is Teddy. Congratulations, everyone, for a really great game. And the winner of this game, congratulations for both two highest students. We have the highest point are Esther and Clayton. Everyone, please give Clayton and Esther a clap. Now, our first part of the talk show has come to an end. We now come to the second part with more insightful sharing and exciting game. I would like to invite you all to participate in this discussion. Parents and students, you can send your questions and ideas in the chat box to join the conversation. Besides having outstanding academic achievements, our guest speaker are also active members in various extracurricular activities and competition at school and out of school. Let's hear first from Clayton. So could you tell us about extracurricular activities that you have joined at Nisai and outside Nisai? Um, yes, okay. So, so far in Nisai, I've joined the debate club as an extracurricular activity. And as for the competitions, I used to join maths and science competitions. And those were, I believe, GISMO, SASMO, and WMI. And that's for the maths. And for the science, uh, I joined GISMO for science once. But that was some time ago, like a long time ago. And I also once joined a writer's workshop where I had to finish a very short story in Indonesian language. I managed to finish one, so but yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Clayton. But I can see that you have joined in quite a lot of activities, mostly our competition. So how did you manage time to balance your study and these activities? Well, so I divided the activities and studies. So. I put my studies in the main priority list. So I would finish it first because I still believe that these activities, they're like, they're a part of my learning course, but like they're a branch from the main course, which is like the, the main studies like school, Nisai and so on. So if I have any free time or if I had a time where I had to do homework, but there was no homework at that time, then I would, just focus on preparing for those events. Um, yeah, and that's how I balance them. But sometimes it may have overloaded and things have gotten out of control a few times. But so I couldn't really prepare for these events that well, but I somehow managed to survive and yeah, uh, that's all for me. Thank you for just sharing, Clayton. I have not so many meaningful experiments in some competitions. So after your sharing, I maybe I will try for to join for more competition. Thank you very much again for your helpful sharing, Clayton. So what about Lindan? Also, you used to be a member of Nisai Debate Club as Clayton, right? So could you tell share more about your experience there? Oh, so I was a former member of the Nisa Debate Club, but recently I just uh, dropped out of uh, the club because I didn't have much time on the club to prepare for. But overall, the last experience with me was pretty good when I have a chance to meet and communicate with other friends as well as the teacher is very supportive. I also learned a lot of knowledge, for example, like building the structure of the speech, being on the opposition and preposition team. So overall for me, the experience was just perfect. So thank you for your sharing, Ling Dan. But can I have another question, please? So do you have any difficulties when you joining debate club and how can you fix it? Well, at first, I was nervous because I didn't know what to speak when I get onto uh, the debate. Well, but then after that, I after a lot of practice with other friends and session, I 
uh, more self-confident and my speaking was more fluently and I have and I'd be more confident in that point. Also, at first, I didn't know how to like build a proper speech, but after a few first lessons, I understand more about the structures and I improve uh, afterwards. Thank you for your sharing again, Ling Tan. So Beside Debate Club, which focus on debating skill at Nisai Global School, also organized the Youth Success Series, which introduced essential skill to students. So I have heard that Shogun often joined the Youth Success last year. What have you learned from those sessions? Uh, yes, I did join Youth Success last year, and it was a very pleasant experience where it forced me to expand my knowledge on what I thought I knew and pushed me out of my comfort zone and really helped with my public speaking. I find myself more confident due to, uh, due to this extracurricular activity. That's all for me. Thank you for your sharing, Tanaka uh, Shoka. But can I have another question, please? Like, this year, do you join TalkFest? I don't join much anymore. Oh, okay. Thank you for your sharing again, Shogun. All your experiences are really interesting. For all the students, want to you join success won't scare anymore. So speaking in of competitions, one of our guest speakers here, Esther, have achieved award, gold award in various art competitions. So Esther, did you arrange your time between your academic study and art activities? I've made a to-do list with dates and times to accomplish it. And I try not to procrastinate so I can do everything on time. Then I fix a daily schedule and practice for my math, piano, and singing, as I believe that practice regularly will help me master and improve my skills. That's all from me. So Esther, preparing from competitions requires devoting devotion of time, effort, and support from family members and school. Could you tell us more about your parent assist you in such contest? Well, my mom is always encouraging me to try new things. And she's always patient with me because whenever I got a piano piece to record and I made a mistake, she'll say it's okay and try again. And my dad is always there to cheer me up when I was feeling down. And he is like my very own audience because he always clap when I finish playing a piano. And that's all from me. Thank you for your sharing, Esther. So can you teach after today's talk shows, can you teach me how to play piano? Because I think it's really difficult. Us, whenever you are free. Thank you for your Esther, and we have a new piano teacher for Nisai Global School as Miss Esther. Okay, so anyone want to learn how to play piano, please contact with Esther. So let's come to the next, um, please, Shana. Let's hear some sharing from her. A young author of two books, The Adventure of Unicornia and Demystifying God for Young South, published in two consecutive years, 2021, 2022. Could you share more about the way you plan your study and your book writing? Okay, so writing poetry, short stories, and novels are my hobby. And I get up early at six o'clock every morning and practice yoga. And because of practice yo practicing yoga, I really can concentrate very much on the classes. I can focus more clear clearly and learn more effectively as a result. And even Nisai teachers are really the best. They guide us in assignments, tests, and whenever we, there's a doubt, they clear it immediately. And I often struggled with assignments, but as soon as I improved, now I never find any assignments that hard. 
Thank you for your sharing. So what about your parents, Shana? What did they do to support you during your book writing? My parents give me a lot of support. It can be attending the class, writing the books, taking part in extracurricular activities. My parents and my grandparents are always motivating and encouraging me to learn as it shapes our future. My parents always tell me to take frequent breaks and have a good night's sleep and as it's really important. Okay, so Shana, when I should share a little bit about you, like when I hear that a kid, a girl who just write two books in this age, how is that possible? It like blew my mind and oh my God, how can it happen? I'm really surprised about it. So Shana, um, I want to have a little question. Like when you cannot think about any idea to write so what did you do that time okay so actually my first book was based on my dream i was sleeping and suddenly i had some dreams and quickly i woke up and wrote it in my diary and soon it became a book the adventures of unicornia and demystifying god for young soul was a book of poetry and i really have a lot of ideas like even now I have a thousand of ideas about poetry. So I don't really struggle with poetry, but sometimes I do struggle of writing the plots of the stories, but still that dream helped me. And I really didn't struggle much while writing the book Adventures of Unicornia. And even now my mom always tells me that I'm really creative and each and daily I get some new, new ideas. And my mom chooses the best of the best, and then she helps me with my writing. Thank you for your sharing, Shana. Which your new book in 2023, maybe, will come yes. soon, and I can read it too to see how amazing the book you write is. Oh, yeah. I'm going to write a horror story action. Thank you for your sharing again, Shana. So, I want to ask Shogun again a little bit question because now uh, I have some question for you like can you share some tips to build up patience and independent learning? Um, well, I try to do my studying in uh, uh, a room with a good natural light and a clear view of the outside to make sure I don't feel suffocated in a room while studying. And I try to do my studying with lo-fi music to keep me concentrated so I don't get bored. Yeah, that's really it. Thank you again for your meaningful sharing. So lastly, Konomi, one of the A-level students who got the A score, in AS Mathematics last year. Let's listen to her video about tips to get high score and how to manage her extracurricular activities. Hello, my name is Konami Anozato. I'm in the second year of A-level at Nisai. Unfortunately, I cannot attend this talk show today because I will take an interview for college admission. But I made a video to tell you my learning tips and my extracurricular experience. So I hope you find them useful. For my A-level studies, I try to do as many past papers as possible to familiarize myself with exam style questions. I also looked at model answers to see what the examiner would expect for me to answer. Um, another important thing is setting the goal high. For example, when I took AS level math, I aimed to get 100%, but my actual score was 97%. If you aim for the top, you never know that you will reach that goal, but you always get close to it. So I recommend setting the goal a little bit higher. I am interested in filmmaking. I directed a short film last year and it was nominated for an international film festival accredited by the Academy of Arts. 
Um, when I was applying to universities, I wrote about my experience at film festival in my personal statement and talked about it during admission interviews. Um, then last week, I received an offer from one of the universities I applied to for film and visual culture major. I think the extracurricular that you are passionate about and you are proud to be involved in can be very helpful when applying to universities. As you can see in the Konomi Onozato sharing video, so uh, it's really sad and disappointed a little bit because she cannot join here today because she has an interview from Cambridge University, a really big and famous university in British. So um, again, really pretty sad and disappointed, but anyone who have any question, you can send it in the comment and I will send it to Konomi for the next time. So. Also, a uh, a mark in mathematics is also my uh, my target in this year. So maybe so we all we also most get meaningful sharing from our guest speakers and also her video. Hopefully, it can help other fellow students in their learning progress. Before we enter the next part of the webinar, I would like everyone to join another mini game called Who Know the Most? So in this game, it has a pretty simple rules. Our guest speaker will need to answer 11 multiple choice question about common social and science knowledge. There is a time limit for 20 seconds of each question. Now, for each question are correct, the guest speakers will get five points. Now, are you ready? Let's start off with the first game. First question of the second mini games. So for the first question, for who know the most game, what would happen if you soaked a raw egg in vinegar for 24 hours? A, the yolk would turn green. B, it would disintegrate completely. C, the shell would turn rubbery. And D, the egg is unaffected. So everyone who are watching to our game now, you can let into the comment and play with us. Okay, time is up. So let's see what is our answer because I can see most of our watcher are choosing C. So everyone, uh, uh, guest speaker, can you turn off your background and can you show your answer to please? Okay, so I can see from Esther, Linda, and Shogun, you answer C, but Clayton, you answer D. So is Clayton or other students have correct answers? So teacher, can you show our answer for this question, please? Okay, the correct answer is C. Congratulate, uh, congratulations, everyone. So uh, can you turn on to the next slide so I can explain more about this question answer. So as you can see, the eggshell is made from a mineral called calcium carbonate. And the uh, when you add with the acid, which is vinegar, and the egg calcium carbonate will become to the CO2 or carbon dioxide. And it explains that when this chemical reaction between the calcium carbonate and the vinegar produces a gas, is, which is carbon dioxide, and 
This reaction also dissolved the eggshell, leaving a soft, squishy, and bouncy rubber egg to cover the egg. So the answer is C. Next question, please. For well, question two, what is the largest organ in the human body? First, the heart. B, the kidneys. C, the skins. And D, the brain. You have 20 seconds to answer. So everyone, please choose the answer. Thank you for your answer. So everyone, guest speaker, also please sh show your answers. So everyone, all the guest, our guest speaker are choosing C, but I can see in the box chat, there are some students are answering D and some are answering C. So please show our answer. The correct answer for this question is C, the skin. So can you turn on to the next slide so I can explain more? So as you can see, skin covers the whole body. So it made up of 16% of one overall body mass. The area of the brain is about 0 0.25 meters square. The heart is about uh, 538 to 1076 square feet. The kidney are real small. They are just about 12 centimeters. So as you can see, skin is really large. So the correct answer is C. Congratulations, all the students and guest speakers who are answering C. Next question is question three. Who invented the first functional telephone? A, Albert Einstein. B, Nikola Tesla. C, Thomas Alva Edison. And D, Alexander Graham Bell. The time is up. So, guest speaker, can you raise your answer, please? Wow, I can see everyone, even guest speaker and all the questions, all the students in the chat box. Choose D, Alexander Graham Bell. So, the correct answer for this question is D, Alexander Graham Bell. Alexander Graham Bell, a Scottish born American, inventor, scientist, and teacher of the deaf, what invention of the telephone in 1876, and that was the oldest phone, and is, it is not like, it helps a lot to create our telephone today, so really thanks for Alexander. So for question four, What is the largest desert, desert in the world? A, Sahara, B, Antarctic, C, Gobi, and D, Mojave. Difficult question. A or B or C or D? Okay, time's up. Guest speaker, please show your answer, please. I can see most of the uh, most of the guest speaker are answering A. Only Clayton choose enough again choose B, and I can see in the meeting chat we can see both A, B, C, and D appear. So, what is the correct answer? The correct answer for this question is B, Antarctic.
So to explain a little bit, Antarctic is um even it's cold, but it's still desert because it's like really difficult for plants or animals to live there. And as you can see, all the areas you can, for, for, for desert in the world, you can show here all of them are really big, but Antarctic is the biggest. So the correct answer should be B. So for please question five. One country has played in every World Cup. Which one? A, Brazil. B, China. C, Argentina. And D, Portugal. <laughs> Difficult question one. So time's up and everyone, please raise your answer. I can see in the box chat, mostly choose A. And so all the guest speaker are choosing A too. Clayton, can you raise up a little bit? I cannot see. Okay, so you choose C, Argentina. So Neymar or Messi or uh, Ronaldo will be the correct answer for this question. So please show us. The correct answer for this question is A, Brazil, with Neymar and Pelé, a legend in the football. So Brazil um, have joined 22 times, China only one time, Argentina with 30, 15 times, and Portugal with six times. From 1930 to 2018, every World Cup has included Brazil. They have extended their streak to 22 straight after qualifying for the 22 World Cup in Quota. So congratulations, everyone. Let's come to question six. Who is the author of Jane Eyre masterpiece? A. William Shakespeare, B. Jane Austen, C. Charlotte Bronte, and D. Victor Hugo. We will want to see your question. Time is up, so can everyone raise your answer, please? I can see most of students are choosing C, Lingdan, you choosing B, and Esther choose B too. So the correct answer for this question is C. Congratulations. So Jane A, a novel by Chola Bronte, was first published in 1847. Widely considered a classic, it followed the life of the main character, Jane, through that novel. The gay novel gave the new truthfulness to the Victorian novel with its realistic portrayal for the inner life of a woman, noting her struggle with her natural desire and social conditions. So congratulations, everyone who you see. Let's come to question seven. Who is the artist of this painting? A, Vincent van Gogh, B, Pablo Picasso, C, Francis Bacon, and D, Frida Kahlo. is up so please show the answer okay as i can see most students choose b so let's show our answer for this question congratulations everyone the answer is b Papo picasso 
a vampire. One of the Picasso most famous work, the painting of the Weeping Woman, was created in France and depicted one of his mistresses, Durant Mar. Let's come to the next question. So this is the last question, everyone. Please try your best. The day before the day, before yesterday, is three days after Saturday. What day it is today? A, Monday, B, Tuesday, C, Sunday, or D, Friday? Okay, everyone, so please raise your answer. So most of our students, how about Clayton and Shogun? Okay, everyone are choosing B. So please show our answer for this question. I'm sure everyone are wrong. Yeah, the answer is D, Friday, not Wednesday or Tuesday. So the day before the day before the day is three days ago. Three days after Saturday is Tuesday. Therefore, three days after Tuesday is Friday, which is today. Actually, today is Wednesday, but the answer for this question is Friday. So as you can see, the explanation on the board. And that is all for our eighth question in our second mini game. Who know the most? Sadly, really sad for the last question. No one answered correctly. So uh, before waiting a little bit for our answer, uh, for our mark, so maybe I want to ask someone about our, this game. So Shana, what do you think about this game? It was quite difficult, but interesting. Yeah, I think it's really quite interesting too. So is there any difficult question that you haven't learned any side classes before? That painting one was something difficult. Other than that, every, every question was quite easy for me. Thank you for your answer, Shana. So how about Clayton? Is that interesting? Is that interesting or not? Oh well, yes, it is interesting. And I get to learn that eggshell plus acid is make it rubbery. And then the last question was pretty bamboo bamboozling. Uh, got too distracted with the day before, the day before yesterday, and the three days after Saturday. So yeah, it was nice. Thank you for your sharing, Clayton. So Esther, what do you think about this game? This is very interesting. And the last question was very tricky. Yes, I can see in the last question, everyone have wrong answer, just me Tuesday, but the correct answer is Friday. So it's, but I actually, it's real, still a great game. So, Let's continue for our meeting now as the sharing section of our talk have come to an end. I would like to, sorry, a little bit. Yeah, thank for all our special guests for being here today and for all the interesting and useful experience that they have brought in after the talk show. Nisai Global School will send a certificate for of acknowledgement to each guest speaker today as a way to recognize their contribution. Before moving to the Q&A session, I would like everyone to watch a short video about Nisai, parent and student. Please scan the QR code in the video to check in for more useful information and offer from Nisai.
Currently, we're offering Taste a Class program for free. The program provides students a glimpse of what it is like to study English as the first language lessons in a cross-cultural classroom with qualified teachers from the UK. The class is for students aged 8 to 12 with their English skills at around A1 CEFR or above. The class is opened every Friday. Please scan the QR code to sign up and we will contact to inform about the course schedule. In addition, there is a limited number of slots available for the Nisai's Presentation Course 2023. In this course, students will improve their English skills and learn the fundamental techniques to be a pro presenter. Students will be able to demonstrate what they have learnt in their final presentation project in a multicultural classroom with international teachers and students. The class is opened every Wednesday. Please scan the QR code to sign up and we will contact to inform about the course schedule. Last but not least, there is a limited number of slots available for the Winter Study Abroad International Course 2023. Nisai offers students a one-week opportunity to experience studying abroad at home in international classroom with global students and teachers. Students who love English and want to join Nisai in the spring term can try out this course. The course includes eight different subjects and can be studied independently. It is for students grade 4 to 7 with English skills at A2 CEFR or higher. Please scan the QR code to sign up and we will contact to inform about the course schedule. Before moving to the Q&A session, I would like everyone to scan the QR code in the video to check in for more useful information and offer from me side. Remember, it just has a limitation number. Please scan the QR code in the video to check in the event and get valuable offer from Nisai Global School. Hopefully, parents have had enough time to check in our QR code. We will be sending out various valuable offers, so parents, please make sure that you have checked in not to miss an, on any opportunity. We will be playing the video again at the end of the talk show. And now, follow the agenda. It's time for everyone to discuss and share the thoughts. Since we publish the offer, official announcement about web this webinar, parents from all over Asia have been sending questions to Nisai. Today, we only have about 15 minutes to, for the Q&A session. So we will proceed with the question picked up for the text chat. So if you have any question, feel free to ask in the text chat. I can see we have some question now in the chat box. For the first question, uh, is for Clayton. Can you share some tips, build up patience and independent learning? Uh, so I well, I was once uh, very patient, but I started. Uh, people around me told me that every time I feel uncomfortable or something, I would just need to take deep breaths and regulate my emotions. So I think that to build up patience, first, the first step is to calm yourself down. And then after that, you should think about the effects of what you do. So let's say you followed an impulse to do something, and then in the future, you found that 
you didn't really want to do it. So you sort of regret it a little. So before you do it, I usually just think about it first and the possible consequences. And then after that, I would evaluate to like, eventually, should I just go through with it or should I not do it? And sooner or later, it became something of a habit. And then thanks to that, my patience could be said to come from some thoughts. Yeah. Thank you. That's all. Thank you for your sharing, Clayton. And hopefully, parents who have this question have just received a great answer from Clayton. So for next question is for Lindan, how to manage time while studying at two school and other activities? Um, so I have like a specific schedule for uh, where, which, uh, which activities will connect and which lessons I will be learning on what day. Um, so I study two school at a time, but my prioritize is my traditional school, which is Jin school. So I mainly would did all of the works that is required to do at my traditional school first, and then I will do the work at that Nisai assigned. Well, because um, if there are too much work for my traditional school, I will uh, ask the teacher from Nisai to for me to turn in like the work for a few days in order to work, uh, in order to finish off the assignments with the best quality. And also for outside activities, I usually do it on the weekends where I have uh, more free time than the weekdays. So that's uh, probably my time management. Thank you for the sh meaningful sharing, Ling Dan. So for the next question, I want to ask a friend from Thailand, Shogun, what do you what to do when you can't focus during your study? Well, I normally try and do my studying with some calming music to keep me concentrated without getting me bored. And even if you're super focused, always keep in mind that staying in the same position for a long period of time isn't good for your body. So don't forget to get up and stretch once in a while. Lastly, make sure to work in a nice environment with natural light or a clear view of the outside to not feel suffocated in a room. That's all for me. Thank you again for your sharing, Shogun. So Esther, please share tips primary student can manage time to study. I think setting a timetable and having self-discipline are very important in time management. As a primary student, I have to admit that I sometimes tend to procrastinate. So that's why I need a timetable to remind me of what to do. And also having a self-discipline to follow the timetable. And concentration is also very important too, because when we schedule the time to do something, we will need to focus on it so we can complete the task and proceed to the next task. And this will be very effective in learning. And that's all from my experience. Thank you for your sharing, Esther. So another question for Shana, please. Can you give some tips to encourage students to read and how to make students love reading? While I was young, I personally really hated to read books, but later I found out that I enjoy reading non-fictional and adventurous and fantasy books. So if you don't like to read novels or any other books, first of all, like find what genre you like and then slowly start to read short stories. For example, if you like horror, like read some short stories and then slowly improve to novels, poetry, and in every field you like, for example, even non-fictional. But first of all, my mom was someone who reads a lot and we have a library at our home. So she always picks me some best of the best, best books. And then uh, she gives me some tasks like you should complete this book within two months, this book within one month. So yes, that's also improved my vocabulary and reading skills. Thank you for your sharing, Shana. So for the next question, I wish Esther 
can answer this question. What are the best way to learn speaking or pronunciation or vocabulary? Well, through my experience, I say reading is the best way to learn vocabularies because from the repeated words appeared in stories or readers, I'll get to know them very quickly. And then listening to stories or songs and watching English movies will definitely help me, will definitely help me improve my speaking skill. Besides, I also think we need to listen to news or watch talk shows more often. So that way we can improve our pronunciation. And these are my methods of English learning. Thank you uh, for your share, this sharing, Esther. So Clayton, what are the best way to learn vocabulary and speaking? Well, like as I said before, I think reading is part of it, but like you gotta read it a lot. That way you can practice your pronunciation. And then my school teacher said that there's not an app um, you can use to actually um, evaluate how you pronounce it, words and things. And also I would suggest watching movies because like the people in movies, they in sometimes they include local slang words or anything, but they're like what well, has quite natural pronunciations. And then from reading books and watching the movies, uh, try practicing it with your friends or family. Like if you learn a new language and you try to pronounce the words correctly, that way you'll get used to it sooner or later. And then, yeah, you'll get it eventually. That's thank all. You for, thank you for your sharing, Claydian. So next question, I wish Ling down to share this uh, share some ideas about the question. This is a really interesting question and we are just trying to answer. It's learning early in the morning work because so, um, a parent hear that the so learning in early in the morning is better. Well, I believe that learning in the morning is actually better than when you're studying really at night. Because at night, after like a full day at school, you are getting very tired as well as you don't have your full concentration right now. So my tip is that you go to sleep early and then wake up a little bit early in the morning uh, in, to study. Because uh, when you are waking up, you are energetic and as well as your mind is fresh. So you'll be able to uh, get more information into your brain. And that's actually weird because I have applied it uh, a few days because I have exams coming up. Thank you for your sharing, Linda. Also, this question, I wish Shogun can share your ideas. Um, so I know some people who hate working in the morning and this includes me. So I believe that the time you choose to study is really up to your personal preference. For me personally, I believe studying later at night is better due to everyone being asleep so I can have some peace and quiet and give me a really nice and comfortable feeling. That's all. Thank you for your sharing, Shogun. So do you have any tips for becoming fluent talking English, Shogun? Um, I'm, I usually watch movies and try to get their pronunciation down because it's a really fun way to learn words and their pronunciation. And I'd say you should start with movies you enjoy and then slowly be, uh, going to TV series, like something like Friends, where you would be able to get um, a little bit of their slang and their uh, different ways to use simple words. Yeah, thank you for your sharing, Shogun. I also use that tip to speak English pretty fluently now. Uh, another question. 
So I wish Miss Emily will answer this question. So a parent asked, what are the requirements to study at Nisai? Hey, hello, everybody. I hope that I can help with this question. So at Nisai, uh, when you want your children to uh, study at Nisai, we will have an initial assessment for the student to uh, try with math and English. After that, we will evaluate their um, result to uh, uh, find out their to find out their ability to sit in the suitable courses or suitable level. So at this side, the student will sit in the course in the level based on their ability, not based on the age. So uh, if you have you, if you want to know more about the admission process, please con uh, please uh, leave your information below and our team will reach you to give you more detail. Thank you. Thank you for your really hopeful, uh, meaningful sharing from Miss Emily and I wish any parent have this question, we'll, we'll, we'll have some more new students, Nisire, for the next spring. So what if you have a school for morning, noon, afternoon, and evening, and how to manage time? So Ling Dan, please answer this question. I really... Well, it seems tough for you to have like classes all day, but my best advice for you right now is trying to focus most in class in order not to like overwork yourself uh, when you come home because since you have class like that when you come home you basically just like relax so maybe just do your work or your homework at school in order to have less work uh, at home yeah Thank you for your sharing, Lingdan, and also I want to share a little bit in this question. I also study both public school in Vietnam and also Nisai. Uh, in the morning, I go to the public school and study from 7 to 11, and then I come home studying psychology during the noon. I have no sleep, and I should have lunch during the classes, but it's still really fun. And in the afternoon, I should have thinking skill and mathematics classes. And in the evening, I also should do homework and learning some English classes. So I think to manage time is pretty easy. You can make a timeline, like a plan for you. Like you can outline, make bullet points about what should you do each day and you will try and to manage you to do finish all the work that you planned the yesterday for today. So after finish one work, you can take it and just sleep when you finish all the work and your plan. So that is a little bit of my about my sharing to manage time when I go to study both in this high and public school all day. So for the next question, how can you encourage them to read? Uh, how do you, can you encourage the children to read? So I wish Shana would share some more new things about this question, please. When I was a child, my mom used to buy me some books where there are a lot of pictures, not so many words, but there are a lot of pictures. And also there are some words like, a new word that you can learn. She used to buy me comics and like a picture story because they are more interactive. Because when I was a child, I really hated to read a book where there, where there are no pictures or where there is something not like comics. So she bought me some comics and some picture stories and that got me into learning. Okay, thank Actually, you. Actually, that got me into learning some new English vocabulary words. And then slowly I started to read some short stories. And then now I'm reading novels. I'm trying to read actually, because it makes me sleepy. Thank yes. you for your 
Thank you for your sharing, Shana. And I think our Q&A part have gone really, really long with lots of questions from our parents and our students. But I think the time is end now, and that is the last question for Nisai Talk Show today. I think it's time to wrap up everything. And anyone, if you have any question, please uh, send some message to Miss Emily or teachers in Nisai, they will answer for you. And thank you to all our lovely speakers, parents and students to join the event with us. We hope you enjoy it and hope to see you soon in another event. Thank you and see you again. Uh, from Nisai, we would like to thank all to the students and parents and partners and um, to join the event today with us. And we hope to see you soon in another event. Thank you and good night.